Science is going through a major revolution. There's no question about it. We are living in exciting times in spite of what government agencies might tell you. Uh, more than, um, and probably in no area has there been more misunderstanding than in the area of the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Whenever anybody embarks on this search, there seems to be great controversy, great misunderstanding. And yet, more than two decades of responsible research by investigators outside of NASA uh, on this object, the so-called face on Mars, have revealed very strong evidence, not yet proof, that this object and other objects nearby were artificially constructed. And yet, NASA and its contractors have shown no interest in these objects and have obfuscated the research. History is full of examples of denial and suppression of new ideas by the establishment. We have Galileo, Copernicus, Bruno, the Wright brothers, and so forth. In each case, the conventional wisdom was reversed by the investigations of courageous outside researchers who have risked their careers and sometimes their lives to seek the truth rather than to be politically correct. had reports to the effect that the Viking equipment will never determine positively whether or not there's life on Mars. Can you set us straight on this? Well, my own view is it's uh, much too soon to decide whether we will have a definitive answer. Uh, it may be that there is uh, an exotic biology on Mars. It may be that there's an exotic chemistry which looks a little bit like biology. There's a number of experiments to be done. They might decide the issue. They might not. But either way, the Viking has been a biological success because uh, the chemical explanation means that there is a kind of chemistry in the Martian surface which simulates some of the steps of chemistry in biology. We would learn something important about the origin of life. In 1976, sent two unmanned Viking probes for the first time to land on Mars. And what did the orbiters, that didn't land, but were kept cruising around, taking pictures, what did they discover? But one afternoon on July 25th, I believe, 
1976, they took a picture of a region called Sidonia, a picture that looked like this. And because it looks so extraordinarily different than any scientists that JPL or NASA or Caltech or whoever had ever imagined, what happened to that view? Well, the first reaction, the first official reaction, I heard myself. I was a member of the press. I was working for CBS, and I was also a NASA consultant back then. I was in the JPL press room, Von Karman Auditorium, when Jerry Soffin, who was a Viking project scientist, said, when this picture was popped up on the screen, isn't it peculiar what tricks of lighting can do? When we took it and took an image a few hours later, it all went away. That has been the position of NASA for the last 30-some years. In 1976, the Mars Viking orbiter imaged a mile-long mesa that resembles a, a human face staring straight up into space. The spacecraft also imaged other objects of interest in the surrounding areas. This began a 25-long period of scientifically inappropriate actions, including the initial de denial of a second corroborating image of the Cydonia face. The use of improper optical algorithms and filters on the high-resolution face image for, uh, for example, the initial Mars Global Surveyor photograph. Holding back or delaying the release of images from the public and providing premature negative interpretations of their possible artificiality. Also, we have seen in NASA a lack of cooperation with qualified outside investigators, including campaigns to discredit the inquiry. The refusal by mainstream scientific journals to even consider and review papers, let alone publish them. And NASA's failure to reimage the face and surroundings under proper circumstances when occasions arose. Collectively, these activities violate NASA's own charter as an open civilian agency accountable to the public. The main casualty in all of this has been the truth. How could this have happened? Perhaps NASA and its contractors and other agencies are following a secret policy to deny evidence for extraterrestrial intelligence, pursuant to a 1961 Brookings Institution report recommending non-disclosure to the public. Um, the actual image was taken at a rather oblique angle under extremely unfavorable lighting conditions. Uh, but because we have the older images from a different angle, we can triangulate. And computer uh, processing programs are very good now at giving, reproducing lighting from any angle. So we can use those computer techniques with the actual data. Um, this is done by a computer, not by an artist. There is no introduction of new data in this image by any artist. It is just rearranging the features you see by computer instructions to restore a, a high angle of lighting, uh, put the shadows in the right place, and to restore an overhead view from this oblique view to one side. And here's what happens when we do that. There's the lighting restored, and now we rotate to a view from above. And this is what the uh, object actually looks like, as best we can tell at this point. Um, so both uh, the uh, other scientific arguments uh, and the new view uh, of the face uh, certainly have our attention with regard to prospective artificiality of this object. But there is more. In this image, to the amazement of everyone, uh, in, including the scientists uh, involved who made these predictions, we can see two nostrils at the end of the nose. We can see uh, an iris inside the eye socket. We can see an eyebrow feature over the eye socket. We can see that the mouth does consist of parted lips. Uh, all of those predictions 
uh, that were made in advance to distinguish artificial from natural were fulfilled in favor of an artificial or built object in this image. The combined odds uh, of this feature arising as a product of nature uh, or, uh, or the chance origin hypothesis are a thousand billion billion to one. Last year, the Soviets launched two spacecraft to the planet, both named after the Martian moon, Phobos. Their mission was to photograph Mars and land probes on its moon. One was accidentally switched off by a mission operator. But the second reached Mars and transmitted pictures that are still puzzling Soviet scientists. As it swung over the equator, it took pictures from a height of 6,000 kilometers. This is an infrared photograph. It shows differences in temperature. The dark patches are colder. This section covers 600 kilometers. It shows objects down to the size of two kilometers. It's the most detailed infrared picture of the planet's surface. We have some very, very thin lines on the surface of Mars in the infrared, which means it's heat. I mean, it's not visible, it's heat. You can see it through clouds if you want to. These have a resolution, these have a width, I would guess, of three or four kilometers wide. You know, and that's sort of question of what it is. I certainly don't know, and the Russians aren't telling us. Scientists are also puzzled by this shadow pictured on the surface of Mars by both optical and heat-seeking cameras. They're convinced it's a shadow because they can see objects on the surface beneath. But a shadow of what? Finally, there's the mystery of the vanishing spacecraft. The Russians have yet to release the last picture transmitted by Phobos before it lost contact with ground control. But the Russians have said that it shows an object coming towards the spacecraft, an object which, in their words, should not have been there. The spacecraft was circling Mars, coming into the same orbit as the moons of Mars. And the last picture, about they got halfway through it, and they saw something there which shouldn't be there. Professor Kapitza makes the joke that it's Martian people. British scientists will be able to judge for themselves when the Soviets bring their pictures to a conference at Exeter next month. <laughs>